still running that same AIO from five builds ago? It might be time for an upgrade. Whether you're cooling a 14900K, a Ryzen 9 9900X, or just want a cooler that doesn't sound like a jet engine mid-game, liquid cooling's come a long way in 2025. I've tested some of the most hyped all-in-ones on the market, stress-tested them, ran them hot, and yes, even judged their RGB. So if you're shopping for a new AIO cooler, these are the five that actually earned their spot on the list. Let's dive in. Let's kick this off with a cooler that doesn't scream for attention, and that's exactly why I love it. The Corsair Nautilus RS is what I'd call a grown-up liquid cooler. No RGB, no screen, just clean performance. I slap this into a stealthy all-black build with a Ryzen 7 7700X, and it's been silent, efficient, and zero drama. It comes with 450 millimeter tubes, which makes routing super easy, even in larger cases. The RS120 fans are daisy-chained, so you don't need to run a dozen cables to your motherboard. That's a rare luxury in this price range. Now yeah, it's not the most powerful cooler out there, and the pump logo can't be rotated, which might bug perfectionists. But for anyone looking for simple, quiet cooling without the disco lights, this is your pick. This cooler surprised me. I tested the 3 and 60 mm version of the Master Liquid Core Dortem Wusur with an Intel Core i5-14600K, and it held its own against coolers that cost nearly twice as much. You're getting sleeve-bearing fans that stay reasonably quiet up to around 1500 RPM, decent RGB control, and Cooler Master's G9R pump, which is dead simple to install. Even includes an infinity mirror effect that looks surprisingly good in person. What's missing? No pre-applied thermal paste, which, yeah, is annoying, but easily fixed with a $5 tube of Noctua NTH1. Honestly, if you find it on sale, and I often do, this thing's a budget beast. Great temps, decent looks, and no weird compatibility surprises. Just remember to order thermal paste. You want premium? This is premium. The Be Quiet Light Loop 360 doesn't just cool your CPU, it cools it quietly. I ran a 14700K through a 10-minute Cinebench R23 run, and the CPU never went above 77 degrees Celsius. That's with stock fan curves. No tuning, no drama. What really sets this one apart, though? It's refillable. That's right, you can top off the coolant years down the line. So, if you're building a system you plan to keep long-term, this cooler's got actual staying power. Installation's a bit fiddly. There are more parts than I'd like, and the cables could use some tidying. But if you care about acoustics, reliability, and long-term use, this cooler earns its price tag. Okay, look, do you need a screen on your cooler? Probably not, but do I love the 2.7-inch IPS display on the Kraken Elite RGB anyway? Absolutely. This cooler is for those of you who want your build to be the centerpiece of your setup. You can show temps, GIFs, game stats, whatever you want, right on the pump. It also features 460 millimeter tubes, clean cable routing, and one of the sleekest designs I've seen in a while. Cooling performance is solid, not the most powerful cooler here, but for most gaming CPUs, including the 14700K or a Ryzen 9 7900X, it gets the job done and looks amazing doing it. If you're building an open case showpiece rig, this is your cooler. All right, this one's my daily driver. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro is the best all-around liquid cooler in 2025. Full stop. You're getting thick radiator with high fin density P12 Pro fans that hit up to 3000 RPM. Yes, loud if you push them, but totally manageable with a good fan curve. A VRM fan built right into the pump block. Super long tubing for flexible routing. And yes, fantastic thermals across the board. I tested it on a Ryzen 9 9900X with PBO enabled, and it never thermal throttled, even in extended workloads. Now, the Intel contact frame included is a bit tricky to install. If you're using LGA 11851 or 1700, lay your motherboard flat and take your time. It's worth it. That frame helps avoid the classic socket bend issue, especially on 14th gen chips. What really what really seals the deal? The price. This cooler performs like a 200 plus unit, but you can grab it for well under $100 if you're smart about it. If I could only recommend one AIO in 2025, it's this, hands down. And there you go. Those are the liquid coolers I actually trust to go into my own builds in 2025. Whether you want a clean stealth rig, RGB madness, or a cooler that just works and doesn't cost a fortune, you've got great options. Drop a comment. What cooler are you rocking right now? Thinking of switching to water cooling this year? Like if this helped you out, sub if you're building soon. And as always, cool smart, build sharp, and stay frosty.